Hey you guys, it's Britt. Tonight I'm here to discuss the Mia Ponsetto situation with you. She's also known as the Soho Karen. I'm sure most of you have heard of this story. I have a lot to say, so if you're interested, please keep watching. Alright you guys, so if you're not familiar with this story, Mia Ponsetto, I'm sure that I'm saying her last name correctly, I hope that I am. That's how I've heard it pronounced. This is a 22 year old girl who had a negative confrontation that was her own doing. I want to put that early in this video. She had this negative confrontation on December 26th in New York City at a hotel in a lobby where she had lost her phone. She had notified the hotel concierge, receptionist, front desk, whatever you wanna call it, that she had lost her phone. And allegedly, in the meantime, what she decided to do was start asking people that were leaving the hotel if they had her phone. Now please take this for what it is. There are many different articles on this whole situation. Not everyone looks at everything the same, but I'm gonna give you guys my, of course, real and raw opinion on this. She claims that she was asking everyone leaving the hotel if they had her phone. I don't know if I believe that because me personally, I have not seen security footage of her talking to anyone except a 14 year old black boy and his father. She decided to confront these two people in the lobby and basically accuse them not basically, that's what she did do. She accused them of not that. So she accused this 14 year old boy of having her phone and voices were raised. She decided to tackle this young boy, even though he was saying, I don't have your phone. She started saying, I'm not letting you leave. You guys will see parts of the confrontation in the video I'm about to react to. You're probably asking yourself, did he have the phone or did he not? No, he didn't. She left her phone in an Uber car and the Uber driver ended up bringing her phone back, giving it to the hotel you know, receptionist or whatever, and the receptionist gave the phone back to Mia. Now, here's the whole thing. When I immediately saw this story, I thought, okay, what if I was in a completely different city and I was at a hotel and I lost my phone, what would I do? If I was in the hotel and I realized, I don't know where my phone is. First of all, I'm gonna look in the room. I'm gonna look in the restaurant. I'm gonna look at the front desk, if I was at the front desk. If they have a um, Starbucks, I'm gonna look at the Starbucks. I'm gonna look around. I am not going to start confronting people that are exiting the hotel and asking them if they have my phone. Because first of all, if someone really had her phone, do you think if she confronts them that they're just gonna be like, oh yeah, here, I stole your phone. Here it is. No, they're gonna say, I don't have your phone. Like even if someone leaving the hotel did have her phone. And I know everyone would have dealt with this situation completely differently, but here's the way that I look at my iPhone. I have insurance for a reason. And instead of wasting all of my energy and getting super duper upset, I would have locked my iPhone, reported it as stolen or lost. I don't know if a stolen report and a lost report is the same thing. I would have, if, if they're not the same thing, I would have reported it as lost. So that phone's done and I would have just paid my insurance premium and bought a new or gotten a new phone. I'm not going to start running up to people and making accusations or pinning them into a corner and demanding that they answer me. It's just not that serious. And in this interview, she really tries to lay on the side of, oh, well, my Apple Pay and that's how I communicate. Like people lose their phones every single day. People of all ages, whether they're at home or in a different country or in a different state or a different city, people lose their phones. 
and you don't hear about many other people confronting a child, a 14-year-old child, and accusing the child of having the iPhone and then physically tackling the child. That's just not how you deal with things. And as a 22-year-old woman, she should have known right from wrong. She is being held accountable for this, and I hope that she is prosecuted. She has been arrested. Most of you guys will probably remember last month I covered the story of Katie Sorensen. Katie Sorensen lied about her kids being uh, the target of an attempted kidnapping at a Michael's craft store. I have two videos on her. I'll link them down below if you're interested. Women or men who come up with these crazy accusations with zero proof to show need to be prosecuted. I don't want to hear that they were just arrested and they took a nap in the jail cell and then they got to go back home. Like, I want to hear that they are being prosecuted because the only way that there's any hope to get a decline of people lying on you know, men and women of color, the only way to try to start limiting that, even though I think that it's a very, very big and problematic task, the only way that we even begin begin to get there is to start not only arresting people that lie, but making sure that they are prosecuted and held uh, responsible for their actions. It's deplorable, it's disgusting, and I have a zero tolerance. That's a massive, massive problem in the United States. And as we know, men and women of color, their safety is automatically put into deeper risk once they are in the hands of law enforcement. So Mia Ponsetto, also known as the Soho Karen, decided to give an interview to Gail King. I love Gail King. I think she's an absolutely amazing interviewer. I think that she knows how to ask the right questions without coming off as too confrontational, but I also don't think that she avoids questions that are more hard hitting. And I think that there's sort of a blend of a few different things that makes you a really good interviewer. And I think that all the boxes are checked for her. I absolutely love her. This interview is not a shit show because Gail didn't do her job. It is a shit show because Mia is the most entitled, self-righteous in this interview. You can feel her entitlement seeping through the screen. And one thing I really want you guys to keep in mind during this interview, because they don't show the, uh, the 14 year old boy, they're only showing Mia because she's doing the interview. I want you guys to keep in mind that this was a 14 year old boy. She is 22. I can tell you guys that when I was 22, I was traveling by myself and I was staying in hotels by myself and I was doing a lot of other things that I probably shouldn't have been doing by myself. But that's the way that I gained life experiences and learned lessons along the way. I can tell you, at 22, even if I wasn't traveling and staying in hotels and doing all this stuff, I would have still known that you don't falsely accuse a child or anyone for that matter of a crime, whether it's stealing, vandalizing, um, you know, causing harm to you, you don't pin that on someone unless it actually happened. And I also want to say that I realize that sometimes, you know, crimes are hard to be proven because they happen in a place where it's just you and one other person and it's that person's word against your person, your story, and that can get very sticky and very frustrating to deal with. But in this situation and in many scenarios in the year 2020, 2021, whatever, one of the good things about modern technology is that people are always filming. There's cameras everywhere. There's surveillance everywhere. There are cameras out on street corners. So I know a lot of people kind of frown upon 
they're always watching, the cameras are always watching. But I honestly look at it as an upside because that is able to give you proof when, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, those cameras wouldn't have been there to provide evidence of events that happened. So let's get into this interview. And I'm gonna try to not interrupt it like every 30 seconds, but let's get started. Mia Ponsetto approached 14-year-old Keon Harold Jr. at a New York City hotel last month accusing him of stealing her phone. His father, jazz musician, Keon Harold, recorded the encounter and accused Ponsetto of racial profiling. We have, what, you, you, see, you see two black people? No, I'm not letting him walk away with my phone! Now, the video shows Ponsetto trying to stop the teenager from leaving the hotel lobby and then rushing toward them. Hotel surveillance video shows the 22-year-old woman tackling Keon Jr. Now, he never had the phone. It turned up several minutes later at the hotel. New York City detectives went to California yesterday to coordinate Ponsetto's arrest in connection with the confrontation. She was contacted at a traffic stop in Ventura County near Los Angeles. Officials say that police had to pull her out of the car when she refused to get out. Now, in an exclusive interview, we had just done that interview yesterday afternoon. Her lawyer spoke with us before she was arrested. They told us that NYPD had not yet contacted them. And did you guys see how quickly she got physical with that young child? She didn't even give it a moment to, first of all, like I said, in my personal opinion, I don't think that she was asking anyone else in that hotel lobby. I think that she had her eyes set on this child and his father off the bat. God, that is so deplorable. But did you see how quick she got physical? Instead of talking it out and saying, hey, I've lost my phone. I'm trying to ask everyone that leaves the hotel if you, you, know, you have seen a phone. Like, first of all, and like I said, I don't even think that that's really the right way to go about it because if someone did steal your phone, they're not going to be like, hey, yeah, I stole it. Sorry, I'm caught. That's just not the way it's going to work. So put in the report with the front desk, report your iPhone as uh, lost or, you know, like I say, lost slash stolen. I don't know if it's um, the same thing to like shut down an iPhone, but report it as no longer in your possession and file a claim with your insurance. You pay a hundred bucks or maybe, you know, even 200 and you get a new phone. Usually if the phone is being reported because it's no longer in your possession, I'm sure that they could make arrangements to have a new phone to you within a day or two. Hell, I don't even know. Maybe you could even go to the AT&T or Verizon store and get a new phone in person. I don't know how that works. Luckily, knock on wood, I've never lost my iPhone. I've never had my iPhone stolen. So stop wasting your energy like you... This, this girl had trouble on her mind and that's, that's the side of the fence I'm falling on. I do not believe that she was trying to do her due diligence here and talk to people leaving the hotel. I don't buy it. Mia, help me understand, what made you think that Keon had your phone? That's why I'm confused. Why did you think he had it? I was approaching the, the people that had been exiting the hotel because in my mind, anybody exiting is... And I hate to interrupt it this early on. I wanna talk about what she's wearing really quickly. The fact that she knew that she was gonna be on national television and decided to wear a hat that says daddy on it. I know the whole internet is talking about this. Allegedly, her attorney told her to take off the hat and Mia decided that she wasn't gonna listen to her attorney about the hat and about several other things as far as going off script when it comes to the interview. This girl, as soon as I saw this image of her in her little leather jacket, her little midriff, you know, with the daddy hat, this to me already the way that she's speaking this early in the interview and seeing that other clip of her, I can already tell that the entitlement is just like spewing through my screen. Just my opinion, but 
that's what I'm gathering. Probably the one that uh, might be the one that is trying to steal my phone. I admit, yes, I could have approached the situation differently or maybe not yelled at him like that and made him feel, you know, maybe some sort of uh, inferior way, making him feel as if I was like hurting his feelings because that's not my intention. I, I consider myself to be super sweet. I the yelling is only a small portion of it. The bigger portion of it is that she physically tackled a child. This father and his son were targeted. She didn't line up all of the hotel guests and check with all of them. She picked them out. In my personal opinion, I think that there were our tendencies behind it because I don't believe that she was checking with all of the hotel guests. There has been no footage to show that she was communicating with other guests leaving the hotel. It shows her confronting the dad and his son and becoming physical very quickly. I really never ever meant for it to like hurt him or his father either. Are you saying that you were stopping everybody in the lobby asking them about your phone? Is that what you're saying? Um, not everyone. Just the just the people that in the meantime, while, while the hotel manager was checking the, the footage, I just wanted to do my part as best as I could. So she wasn't checking with everyone. She just admitted it right there. So what I think happened was she immediately saw this black father and son and targeted them. I think that's what happened. Don't come for me. That's just my personal opinion. I am not buying the fact that she was looking at everyone that was in that lobby. You guys have to think this was the day after Christmas in the middle of New York City. There were plenty of people in that lobby, even if things are the way they are right now. I'm sure that it was a decreased volume, but let's be serious. A nice hotel in the middle of Manhattan the day after Christmas, I'm pretty sure that there were a fair amount of other people in that lobby in the 10 minutes before this and the 10 minutes after this. I believe that she had her sights set on this father and son, and that's where my mind's at with this. You just described yourself as super sweet. I know you've seen the video. When you look at the video, the reaction seems very extreme. It doesn't seem like it's someone who's super sweet. How would you feel if you were alone in New York and you know, you're going to spend time with your family during the holidays and you lose the one thing that gets stolen from you that has all of the access to the only way that you're able to get back home. I just- The only way that you can get back home, ma'am, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, but there is such a thing as people not having iPhones. If, let's just say, she doesn't have an iPhone and she needs to get back home, then what you do is you ask the hotel or you go up to your room and you can call the airline and ask them to assist you with booking your flight back home. Your ID wasn't stolen, your passport wasn't stolen, so you still have your forms of ID. Now all you need to worry about is replacing your phone once it's locked down and you know that nobody has access to it. So her trying to flip this and be like, oh, my phone, if I don't have my phone, I don't have anything. Like you, there are other ways to, you know, find your way home or handle what you need to handle if you're traveling aside from doing it from your iPhone. Or, and on top of it, I'm pretty sure that if your phone was missing, the hotel would be more than willing to allow you to utilize one of their computers or most hotels have a business center where you can utilize the internet, print your boarding passes and do whatever you need to do to get home. Don't think I would randomly attack people is, is, is what I'm saying to you. I know you said you could have handled it better, but I just don't think I would randomly attack people in the manner in which you did. What do you think when you look at that video? You're standing there in your leggings and your flip-flops, and it looks like you're just going nuts, for lack of a better word. No, I'm not letting him walk away with my phone! I don't feel that that is who I am as a person. I don't feel like this one mistake does define me. While I agree with her, one mistake shouldn't define anyone. The problem is, is that there has been more proof coming out that she has other pending charges, and she has a history of being very confrontational 
and lashing out anytime she is being confronted by law enforcement. I think I'm not diagnosing anyone or anything like that, please, but I see someone who needs to seek help and there might be some things that are untreated, but I've said this before, if there are things that are untreated, it also doesn't give you a get out of jail free card or a um, hall pass to treat innocent people like they are garbage and pieces of shit. But I do sincerely from the bottom of my heart apologize that if I made the son feel as if I assaulted him or if I hurt his feelings. It's not about hurting anyone's feelings. She became physical with them, targeted them, and started verbally assaulting them off of the bat. There was no conversation to be had with her. It was accusations followed by her tackling a child. I don't believe one mistake defines anybody, but I, I think when I look at that particular video, you're, you did more than just accuse him. The video seems to show that you physically attacked this young boy. You do see that too, right? By the end of the day, the dad did end up uh, like slamming me to the ground and uh, pulling my hair. So she's deflecting right here. Instead of her admitting that she became physical with a child and tackled a 14 year old kid to the ground, she wants to automatically take the attention off of that, put it back on the fact that the father tackled her and pulled her hair. Now, I'm gonna see if the footage is in this video. I haven't personally seen that footage. So if it's out there, it was obviously a father trying to protect his son from some, you know, crazy bitch that was just being super confrontational and tackling his son after accusing him of a crime in in a public hotel that like I don't even know you I've never seen this lady and all of a sudden she's confronting me accusing me of stealing her phone and then tackling um and then tackling me before a conversation can even be had like that is madness hair and th throwing me and dragging me across the ground so i i will say that yeah but but i think you know the video we saw it looked like you had just attacked his son yeah the footage shows me attacking his son of attacking him how yelling at him yes okay this is this Mia is an individual who is incapable of admitting her faults. She is incapable of admitting when she has fucked something up. And she is incapable of admitting that she is completely wrong. And I don't believe that she is capable of realizing that this shit is serious. This is not just some little, oh, well, I accused him of taking my phone, like, let's move on. No, like, this is big time shit, and I'm glad that she's being, you know, brought to justice on this, because like I said, I think that this is a big problem in this country, and I don't think that um, anyone should just be running around accusing anyone of any crime, period. It's deplorable and it's disgusting and the problem is is that I've told you guys before about the boy who cried wolf and I think that the boy who cried wolf applies to so many different scenarios in life and I think that's why um, you know my dad used to tell me that story when I was little just because now as an adult I look at that story and I'm like it applies to so many different people that I've come across in life if you're running around constantly lying, then the problem is, is that when shit really goes down, nobody's going to think that anything is happening and you're going to end up dead or hurt because of it. So for one moment in time, can we please stop lying on each other? I apologize. Can we move on? I know you're saying, I don't need to, I just want to apologize. But I do think that there should be some context to your actions that day. Okay, so basically, I'm, I'm a 22-year-old girl. I am... 
doesn't matter how old she is. Like I said, I've been 22, and even if I didn't have the life experience that I had back then, I knew right from wrong from the age of five years old. You don't lie on someone and say that they did something that they didn't do. That's taught to you in fucking kindergarten, Mia. I, I don't, I, uh, is, I said, I, how is one girl accusing a guy about a phone a crime because you cannot just lie on people like that you can't just fucking accuse people of doing something when you have nothing to back it up like i said now i know that this might get a little bit of a gray area because there are certain times where you know it's a he said she said situation and i understand you know i'm i'm not talking about that today what I'm talking about is the fact that she lost her phone and instead of acting like a big girl and allowing the hotel to help her out or just be patient because the fucking Uber driver was going to come back and drop off the phone because her dumbass left it in the Uber, she decided to falsely accuse a child of taking her phone that is not okay and her trying to discount it and deflect and act like this innocent little girl literally makes me sick where is the context in that Mia, what is the Mia, deeper, what is the deeper, Mia, what is the deeper Mia, story Mia, it's here? not, it's, it, that's not the problem. You have to at least understand your actions that day. You seem to have attacked this little boy, this young boy, this, this teenager. Yeah, you can't run around just throwing accusations at people. You, you seem, seem to have attacked this teenager, teenager about, about the phone, the phone and then it turned out he didn't even have your phone. That's the thing. I mean, you're, you're, you're saying, look, I'm 22 years old. You're 22 years old, but you are old enough to know better. Yes, Gail, exactly. You're old enough to know better. Like I said, even if, okay, maybe I'm being a little bit dramatic with like the dramatic with the whole five years old thing, but by the time you're, you know, call it 12, 13, by that time, you're definitely going to know that that's not what you do. And if your parents aren't teaching you that, then I feel bad for you. Hopefully you, you know, ended up learning it later on in life. But my God, I mean, this girl, the, um, the entitlement and the privilege is literally like seeping through my screen. I'm telling you right now, it is so frustrating to watch her just deflect and deny and downplay and lie and act like she's annoyed and act like she needs to go. It's gross. So I will say you're 22. All I right, get, Gail, it. get it. Enough. This is what everyone's talking about. All right, Gail, enough. That to me, I know a lot of people are laughing at it, but that to me just goes to show the level of disrespect that this girl has for any and everyone. The fact that she lied on this black 14 year old child and then she's acting like this in um, an interview with a black woman is, to me, I, I see these two tying out and I don't like it. And it is so frustrating to watch people like this. I cannot wait for her to be prosecuted. The hotel no, did no, have no, my no. phone. The hotel did end up having And you see her attorney try to like, you know, reel her back in. This girl is, she needs to be like prosecuted. Like point blank period, she needs to do at least two years in jail. My phone. I did get my belongings returned to me. All right. Well, oh, wow. All right, Gail. Enough. 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 Disgusting. Mia, you are disgusting, and I cannot wait for you to be prosecuted. Okay, so this is what she's being charged with. She's being charged with attempted robbery, grand larceny, endangering the welfare of a child because she attacked a 14-year-old child, 
and attempted a It wasn't him, but at the same time, how is it so that uh, as soon as I get asked to leave the premises uh, after I had accused this person of stealing my phone, how is it that all of a sudden they just miraculously have my phone when I come back? It's because the Uber driver dropped it off, dumbass. And the two, and uh, the, the, it didn't seem as if uh, my accusations really bothered the, the son and the father because they were just uh, enjoying a nice meal right after this whole uh, encounter. And for her to try to uh, delegate what someone else's feelings should be, she, what she's trying to say is basically, oh, well, they couldn't have been that bothered because they were having uh, lunch or dinner afterwards. Maybe that was their way of talking through things and figuring out what was going to be next. Maybe that was the father's way of nurturing his child um, after a traumatic event happened. If them talking over a meal is the way that they wanted to deal with it, Mia, I think that you can fuck off and stop telling others how they should be feeling or how they would have been feeling. Mia, I, want I don't know to be if you over, could say what, and I'm sorry. whether they were so bothered by So I would love to your, make this short and sweet, Gail. Mia, Mia. So she's the type that once she's tired of answering questions with these short, half-assed answers and not really giving anyone information, she's the type that is going to shut it down, or if you're talking to her in person, she's going to walk away. People like Mia do not know how to talk through their feelings or accept blame for situations that they were fully in control of. And that's why I don't think that someone like Mia will ever fully understand the repercussions of falsely accusing a child and causing physical harm to the child unless she is prosecuted and serves a lengthy time in jail or prison. I just don't think that someone like her will learn by doing community service or uh, doing a year probation. She already has other charges, including a DUI, and I think that they are in a certain way, they're going to have to throw the book at her in order for her to grasp just how serious this situation is. Day, Take us back to that day. We've all seen the video. Okay, so um, I arrived back to the hotel after grabbing some Starbucks. I had noticed my phone had been missing. So She's so entitled. I arrived back to the hotel after getting some Starbucks. So I just approached the hotel manager, asked him if he could kindly just check the footage. In my opinion, I was like, okay, any person walking down could- And if she went to get Starbucks, why wouldn't you think, oh, well, maybe I left it at Starbucks or maybe I left it in the Uber if I took an Uber there? Or if the Starbucks was actually inside the hotel, because I know a lot of uh, hotels will have a Starbucks, like an actual Starbucks in the lobby of the hotel. If you went and got Starbucks and came back to the hotel, why wouldn't you check where you just were instead of going to the receptionist and asking them to pull footage? I would have gone back to where I just was, whether that be a taxi cab, an Uber, a Lyft, the Starbucks, um, a restroom, if I used a restroom on my way. Like, there were so many other options instead of just automatically going to you guys need to pull footage and her supposedly even though she didn't in my personal opinion start confronting everyone leaving the hotel possibly be the person that might have had my phone i wasn't racial profiling whatsoever i'm a woman i'm puerto rican i'm like a woman of color i'm i'm italian greek puerto rican you keep saying you're puerto rican does that mean that you can't be because you're saying you're a woman of color? Is that what you mean? Exactly. She's, she, mm, mm, this girl. She's, multiple times she has relied on the I'm Puerto Rican thing, so I can't be the R word. And I'm really glad that Gail called it out for exactly what it is. Well, I, I would disagree that people of color can be
to. Do you believe that you should pay a price for this? I don't feel that my accusation is a, is a, is a crime. But it's more than the accusation. It's the way that you tackled him, it seems, on the videotape. Exactly. It's not just the false allegation, but it's also the getting physical so quickly. This is someone who is not in control of their emotions or how they process anger or work through their feelings. Um, I have also heard, I don't know for a fact, but allegedly she was under the influence of alcohol here. She also had a bad confrontation when she was arrested for another DUI. So I don't know if alcohol in, you know, what she's going through are just kind of at war with each other. I don't know, but it's not good. What would you do differently? You said that you look at that tape and that's not who you are. I think I could have just asked the hotel manager. So yes, I could have stepped aside or the father and I, we, we immediately could have uh, started just speaking at a lower tone and probably that would have handled the whole situation a lot better. But why are you even talking to him if you came from Starbucks? Go back to Starbucks and look. Go, um, you know, if she didn't have her phone, I realized that it would have been difficult to find which Uber driver, you know, she was with. But give it a little time. See if the Uber driver comes back. Like, instead, she jumped the gun and went complete, like, balls to the wall and just went crazy. And that's exactly how we ended up here. Someone couldn't control their anger didn't have any patience whatsoever to allow time to be on her side and decided to point the finger incorrectly at a black child and then become physical with him very, very quickly. With all due respect, when Mr. Harold was talking to you, it seemed to me that he was responding to you because you had accused his son. I'm saying that both of us, I said that both of us. You see two black people? No, I'm not letting him walk away with my phone. Bottom line is this issue is much bigger than um, I think Mia is appreciating, and she, she sees it as a very simple thing. Attorney Sharon Gatan sat with Ponsetto through the entire interview and wanted her client to feel empowered to tell her own story. But Gatan also felt it important to provide context on Ponsetto's state of mind at the time of the incident. So let me just boil it down. She was a 22-year-old woman alone in New York, no one is with her. Her entire contacts, flight arrangements, Wi-Fi, emails, Apple Pay, her funds, her money is all on that phone. Doesn't matter, okay? Even if I have Apple Pay on my phone, but I also have a wallet and my ID and my debit cards. And if I needed to, I could have used the computer at the hotel to print a boarding pass or email a family member to say, hey, I've lost my phone. Like, you know, can you meet me at this hotel? She said she was there meeting uh, family for the holidays. So I understand her attorney is working for her, but the blatant um, dismissal of her, the way that she handled everything being in her phone, like, okay, I get it. But just because uh, funds are on your Apple Pay doesn't mean that like all your money is gone. You can still access your money if you need to. You can still book a flight if you need to. You still have your ID. Honestly, I've said it a bunch of times. I would rather lose my iPhone than my wallet because getting a new driver's license, getting new uh, credit card, new debit card, um, any other card that I have in my wallet is much more daunting, in my opinion, than replacing my iPhone. That's just the way I look at it, but I also understand that the attorney is working for the client, and so that's fine, but mm, I can't say that I agree anymore just because her attorney, like, threw this in there. She agreed that her behavior and her actions were definitely less than elegant, shall we say, and less than graceful yeah, and yeah. less than what anyone else would do. And she agreed and she wouldn't have repeated it. It's been reported that your phone was returned to you by an Uber driver. Is that true? That is not true because I arrived at the hotel with my phone in my hand. Okay. But here's the problem. Mia said that she went out to get Starbucks and came back to the hotel and realized that her phone was missing. And she told the hotel front desk to look at the security footage. 
So, hold on. So now she's saying that she arrived to the hotel with her phone. So, you know, she can't even keep her fucking story straight. Let me go back. So let's listen to this part of the video again. I'm not going to put the video up, but we'll just listen to the audio because we've already seen this part. She says that she went to get Starbucks. She came back to the hotel and realized that her phone was missing. Okay, so... Um, I arrived back to the hotel after grabbing some Starbucks. I had noticed my phone had been missing, so I just approached the hotel manager, asked him if he could kindly just check the footage in my... Okay, so there she said that she went to Starbucks, came back, the phone wasn't with her, she approached the hotel to pull the footage. But then later on, she goes back to saying that all of a sudden her phone was with her when she got to the hotel and she doesn't know why an uber driver would have returned her phone who returned your phone to you the uh, hotel uh receptionist mia where had the phone been why don't we ask the hotel receptionist i can see right through this girl and i cannot wait for her to sit in front of a judge and be prosecuted so that's the end of the second clip of the interview you guys, this is absolutely ridiculous. And unfortunately, this happens all of the time, all across the country. And it's heartbreaking to see. And I will bring attention to it and use my channels who share stories like this because I think that it's really important. Like I said, I can't wait for this girl to actually be prosecuted because I know people get real excited when they see, oh, so-and-so got arrested. The arrest is only about 10% of actually bringing the person to justice and making sure that they are held responsible for what they did. So, okay, I saw like everyone was talking about her getting arrested. That's fine, but that's only about 10% of actually offering a somewhat of a solution to this isolated incident. It certainly doesn't um, solve everything for all eternity, not even close. But like I said, if each of these situations is ending with the person being held responsible and actually being prosecuted and more importantly, actually serving some time in jail, then maybe other people will think twice before they wrongly accuse someone of a crime that wasn't committed and especially if you're in a place like this where all they have to do is look at the footage and see that you're full of shit. I will continue following this story. I also, a couple of you guys asked me about Katie Sorensen. I have not seen anything new on her. Everything's kind of real quiet. I'm still following it. Hopefully something new comes up. I will keep you guys um, apprised of that situation too because she's another one that needs to be held responsible. She needs to be arrested for um, filing a false report and lying on a police report and she also needs to um, be held responsible for um, wrongly accusing that um, a couple in in michael's it's it's a whole thing make sure to leave your thoughts about this down below i love hearing um what you guys have to say about stuff like this not only is this situation unfortunate and heartbreaking for the father and son that experienced this but it also really sucks when you know mia the person that's in the wrong here can't even she can't even act sincere about being sorry about it. You see how she was during this whole interview, very entitled, very much, I don't have time for this. Um, it, it's just disgust all the way around and I'm not buying for a second any of her story and I don't think that the fact that all of her stuff was on her phone is any sort of fucking excuse. I think it's a crock of shit. So anyway, those are my thoughts on this Mia Ponsetto situation. I'll keep you guys updated, but for now, if you like the video, please leave me a like in the comments, and if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.